Whoa, it's actually on. Why? He must have forgot to shut this off. Can you guys hear me through this? Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. No. Gabby, you're on mute. Thanks. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I'm on I'm on mute. No, no Gabby I'm was. Not. You're good. We're all good now. Gabby was on. Where it's actually called, yeah, it's it's actually called uh, Vodka on the Rocks, and it's by um, Creed. It is. <laughs> Maybe that'll work. And then this is whiting us out. Today, just to give you an idea of what we're going to go over, hopefully you guys can hear me on the computer, on the Zoom. Um, we're going to go over rebuttals, handling them proactively, the mindset on rebuttals today, and uh, give you guys parts of the script how we handle it proactively. And hopefully we can get this wrapped up pr pretty quick so you guys can get back on you know, with, with the day. So I wanna try and keep this lesson maybe a little bit shorter if we could, but if we have questions, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not gonna cut, cut us off either. Just like with the training process, the training process you know, should take two weeks, typically is the aim, but if we're not ready to go after two weeks to meet with the clients, uh, believe me, we, we are not going to just, uh, just kick you, kick you out of training and give you a whole bunch of, of leads to call and clients to call. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, I think we already went over and you could just imagine how that could affect our business. If, you know, we have the wrong person trained the wrong way, saying the wrong things out there to a, a group, you know, a union member, maybe that member is a part of the board, or maybe that member is the president of the, of the organization, which happens. So call somebody, hey, tomorrow, and, and you think it's just a normal lead, but it's the president of the company, right? And you weren't prepared and you're stuttering and this and that. Do you think they're gonna have confidence in us to work with their thousand people? Do you think that the president wants to be voted in next year as the president? What do you think? What do you think the highest paid position in the organization is? President. Do you think he wants to go back to being the laborer or being the president of the laborers? He wants to maintain that, right? So he has to keep all his people happy. So if he hires us to go meet with his people and we're making them mad, you know what he's gonna say? heck with this program. I don't need the headache. I don't want to risk me not getting voted in next year, right? So what we got to do is remember that. And then, hey, let's have the president's back. Let's make all the members want to call the president and say, thank you for getting this company, AIL, to handle us, to call us. Thank you for doing this, Joe. You always look out for our best interest. You always got our back. I'm going to make sure we keep vote. Everybody vote for Joe. Joe's ahead of the, you know, that's what we want them to kind of say at the end of this whole process, you know? So um, we got to, I keep that in mind throughout the training process, but just go to back to, you know, we're not just going to have you go out there and see clients if, if you're not ready, have you make the phone calls really, if you're not ready. So 
with that being said, um, rebuttals, you know, so today going over uh, presentation rebuttals, not the phone, presentation rebuttals. But in general, overall, whether you're talking about phone rebuttals or presentation rebuttals, um, there's a mindset that goes along with this, okay? So the mindset is that if you meet with a client and they're sitting there with their spouse, let's use an example of, of a Joe and Mary, you do the presentation and at the end, Joe says one of the rebuttals. Now, what are the top three rebuttals that we're going to get at the end of our presentation? I want to think about it. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. Those are the top two. You will get that well more than anything else. You're either going to get, I can't afford it, or you know what? Sounds good. Just let me think about it. We'll call you back in a couple of days. Like that's what you're going to going to get, or I don't know if I can afford this right now. Those are the biggest ones. The need one, I don't really get the need one that much. Maybe one out of 10, maybe two out of 10 rebuttals that you get are going to be, I don't need it, right? I'm pretty good at painting a picture and showing somebody logically why they need it. I'm pretty good at showing them um, mathematically, mathematically, why they need it so a lot of times they, they, even if they they, they 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 know they pretty much aren't going to really win by telling me they don't need it so a lot of them say yeah i need it i just can't afford it right now or yeah this is something i know i need i've been looking into you know we just got to think about it a little bit more that's usually what you're going to get so if you're pretty good at painting the picture and you're really good at getting them sold on the problem you don't want to sell the solution you want to sell the problem right? Because if, 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 if they don't believe that they have a problem, they don't care about the solution. So you got to get them sold. And that's people go in there and they're like, oh, look, this is going to pay you $200,000. And when he dies, you can use that for income. And this is going to pay off the mortgage. And this certificate is going to pay for your funeral, the freedom of choice. To, you know what you're selling? You're selling the solution, right? They don't care about the solution until they know that there's a problem. So they got to be sold and sales is what? A transfer of belief. So you have to be sold and you have to believe that the problem exists first. And then if you're sold and you believe in the problem first, then you're going to be able to transfer that belief into them and if you transfer that belief into them, what are they going to believe? They're going to believe the same thing you believe, that this is a major problem. You know what, guys? The key word here, this is a major problem and a serious concern. See, Joe, see, Mary, our members have been faced with some major problems and some serious concerns. That's why your president, John Smith, has contracted through our organization to make sure that you have these certain benefits in place, that to make sure that we cover some of these major problems and serious concerns for all the members. So we got to make sure they're sold on that before we can even bring up the, 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 the solutions. The solutions really don't even mean that much to them unless the problems mean that much to them, you know? Like I could be telling you about a bottle of water, but it don't really matter. The, the, the problem got to be somebody needs to be thirsty first. Right? I can tell you about how great this water is. It's a 9.5 pH alkaline. I could tell you, I, it, here's the thing. If you don't know what 9.5 alkaline means, you don't care how, what the solution is. Let me explain to you the problem first. Watch this, ready? So do you guys know about water, first of all, right? First of all, if you have a pool of water outside, a swimming pool. When I was little, we, my Nana had a swimming pool and my dad would go over and hook up the pump every year. And he would put uh, chlorine in it. We would shock the pool. We'd clean it out, sweep the bottom. You ever have to sweep the bottom of a pool? That thing's a mess. You got to hook up this hose and you're down there. You know, I've been there before. And, and every now and then though, the water would like get a little green or get a little foggy. 
right? And we would go in there and he would test the water. You ever test pool water? You basically take a little bit in a little beaker thing and you drop these chemicals in it. And if it turns a certain color and you hold up a chart, if it's like orange and red, it's, it's, it means certain thing. But if it's more purple, then it means it's more clear, I guess. Uh, so the whole point is, you know what you're measuring? You're measuring like the alkalinity of the water, okay? And what they find is that if, if the water is low in alkaline, right? It's, it becomes, and, and it's, it's more acidic is what it is. You're either highly alkaline or, or acidic. So they find that the pool water is acidic, highly acidic, less alkaline. When stuff goes into the pool, it spreads really easy. So like of, a, of, a, of like, a, I don't know, mildew or, you know, moss, or I don't know what makes it green, but like if a little bit of those green organisms or germs or whatever it is, get into the water, it spreads because it's acidic, right? But if the water is highly alkaline, then when that stuff goes into the pool, guess what happens to it? It gets eaten up and, and it almost just looks like dissolves it. Does that make sense? So, so what they said is you want to make sure you don't want to have a too alkaline, too much going on in there is almost like, uh, it'll like burn your eyes, you know, it's just like too much chemical kind of, right? So, so there's, a, there's a, a good medium where you want to measure for your swimming pool. Well, you know, they say that your body is, what, what percentage of, of water do they say your body is? Anybody know that? Uh, I don't know, something like 80%, right? I heard it was 80%, even if it's 60%, whatever, more than half of our body is, is water, right? So if the water in your body, which your 80% of your body is acidic, right? If stuff comes in that is cancerous, that is not good for your body, if, if a pool is highly acidic and bad stuff goes into it, it easily spreads and the pool turns green, right? Same thing happens to your body. Uh, I guess you'd say it would make sense ideologically, wouldn't you say, if your body's a bunch of water and you're a highly acidic water going on, stuff comes in, you could tend to get, you know, I guess you'd say, uh, uh, you know, you know, inflamed, your body can become inflamed, you know? So, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your body is, is, is a high alkaline. And if it's highly alkaline, when stuff comes in, when stuff comes in, then uh, it'll reject it. It won't even let it spread. And it's a way to sort of, I can't say you're cancer proof at all, all you know but it's a way to protect yourself you know by making sure that you have good clean water number one you got to be hydrated you know and number two if you're going to be hydrated you know they say you want to stay alkaline right so so number one if you're not drinking water you got to drink water number two if you want to drink water i could get you this bottle of water right now for probably better at price than you could get anywhere else out there and i could get it delivered to your door every single day. You ever go to the store and you have to buy, buy water? Anybody buy, buy a case of water from the store before? I mean, do we yeah. want to talk about highly in, how highly inefficient that is? You know, if you're going to get cases of water, at least get them delivered right to your door, right? Where it typically costs less than it does at the store. You don't have to move anything at all and it's brought right to your door. And guess how much time it took you? Three seconds to click on Amazon or whatever you want to buy it on. And you could set it up on automatic. So now it doesn't take you any time, not three seconds every time you buy it, three seconds for the whole year. Because you can figure out, oh, I drink about a case of water a week. Oh, good. Every Monday I have a case of water brought to my door. Done. On to the next one. Mark Cuban. You know Mark Cuban? One of the richest guys out there. He can buy all the toothpaste he wants anytime he wants. You know what he does? He says toothpaste has a shelf life of two years. So I buy a bulk of toothpaste that would last me two years. And I get them for like half of what it would cost me. And guess how long it took me? He said, one, all these people waste this time every day going back and forth to the store. Let me buy toothpaste this week. Let me buy toothpaste this month. They're paying three times what they should be paying for it. And they're taking 
25 times more time, which is way more valuable than money because I could go get more money, but I'm never going to get that time back with my kid. So I could be hanging out with my kid, have, watching him eat some pasta and getting it all over his face, or I got to go to the store to get toothpaste. Priceless, right? That's how millionaires think though. I'm just introducing you to a whole new world, a whole new world. And if you're ready for it and you're ready to embrace it, you, you know, you got to realize right now you're here for a change. If you're here to be the same old person, you're going to get the same old results. Yes, we hired you. I want you to be you. Mason's one of the most talented, one of the most energetic, just a no, a one of a kind. Nobody's ever going to be Mason. No one, I, I can't ever find, I'll never be able to replace Mason. I'll never be replaced the Red Dragon. Never get another one. There's only one, you know? So you got to be you, but you're, you're here to, to take you to a whole new level. So we can't do the same things we've always done in life. And, and then all of a sudden expect different results. This is a different vehicle. So I want you to keep in mind, when I was a financial advisor, I was working 70, 80, 90 hours a week. I subscribed to the theory that when you start your own business, you should be doing it every waking moment of your life. It's your own business. It's nobody else's. So I subscribed to that and I did that for three years. And my first year as a financial advisor working 80, 90 hours a week, I made $35,000. Cool calling, prospecting, banging my head against the wall. My second year, I made $50,000 as a financial advisor, right out of college. Out of third year, everybody was calling me Tommy Wall Street. Why? Because that's all I did. They didn't call me Tommy Basketball, Tommy Steeler Games. I didn't go to Steeler Games. I didn't play basketball. I didn't work out. I didn't do nothing. I woke up every day and I shaved and I went to work. They made me shave. That's why I have this beard. Ever since I came to AIL, I didn't have to shave. I could rock a beard. I rocked a beard for the last 12 years. I hated shaving. I had to shave every single day. We had to come into the office clean, shaving with a tie on, financial advisor. How are you doing, sir? Thank you, ma'am. That's how I had to be. So three years of doing that, Every day, eight o'clock in the morning, I left the office at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. Promise you that. Promise. Did that for three years. My third year doing that, I made $70,000. Then I met AIL. So you know what I did here? Same thing I did there, right? But you know what happened is, it's, is, is I got a lot further, a lot faster. Because imagine you get in your car and you put that, you get in and you go, boom, and you push it all the way down to the, to the floor. And it just goes, and you're going like 30 miles an hour, right? And you're pushing all the way down to the floor. So you do that for three years. And that's just what you expect. And then all of a sudden, you get into a brand new Ferrari 488 Italia. You know what those are? Look them up. They're four or $500,000. A couple of my friends have them. Giglione got them. Marcus got them. That's what happens when you come to AIO. You get to hear a car, see, see cars and hear of cars you never even heard of and thought of in real life. Like, I never even, where I came from, they, you didn't, no, not even close. But they introduced, he's like, Tom, you ever see? I'm like, no, what is this? He's like, this is a 4A to tell you. I'm like, well, what's that? He's like, oh, well, you have to get, first of all, you have to buy Ferraris for a long time. Okay. And then once you get in the club and we see you've owned a couple, then you can get put on a list for one. Okay. And then they'll build you one. And then you have to pay them $480,000. Like, okay, that's cool. I didn't know any of that. You know, so it's good for me to know if I ever wanted to do something like that, I guess. <laughs> but um, the point is when I got in that thing and I drove it, it was the scariest thing ever. Cause I'm used to getting in a car and pushing the pedal down and it going, but you know, kind of going, you push the pedal down in this Ferrari. You talk about head jerking back. That's why they have the seat that like hugs you and everything. And they keep you like right there. Cause literally it would have snapped my head like off. I probably would have had whiplash, but and I barely even tapped the gas. Right. So the point of the story guys is when I was a financial advisor, I was driving like a, a, a station wagon, you know? That was my vehicle to get my family to our destination. I was driving us in a station wagon, the same one that Chevy Chase had in National Lampoons. Yeah. That's, that's what I felt like I was driving. And then when I got over here, they're like, Tommy, check this car out. 
you know, and imagine like someone like comes over and like opens the door to like check this car out, right? And I'm like, all right, let's get in, let's try this sucker out. And he's telling me, here's what, here's all the specs now, okay? If you do this, this, and this, I mean, you're gonna be here. And if you do that, that, and that, then you're gonna be here. And if you keep doing this, you're gonna be here, right? So I got in and I was like, let's give it a go. I mean, I, I push it to the pedal, to the metal, you know? So let's see what this thing got. And I pushed this thing to the, to the pedal. It, it was like, AIL was like hopping in a brand new sports car, you know, exotic sports car, whatever one you want to think of. And I just did the same thing I did in the station wagon, which was what? Push this thing as hard as it can go. And do you imagine the difference in results that I got when I, when I did the same thing to the Ferrari versus the, I mean, literally I got so much further, so much faster. I was on a game plan to potentially make $500,000 a year, maybe by the time I was 30 or 30, 35, right? I came to AIL, I made $500,000 in my third year when I was 27. <laughs> you know, like I got there so much faster. And then from there, I said, well, let's just keep it going. Before you know it, left, left literally everybody in, in the dust. I don't know, you know, but I probably made like the most money out of anybody that graduated in my high school uh, class. And I was not Valley Victorian. Let me just tell you that. There's 127 people that graduated. I was number 30. Number 30. I wasn't even in like, that's where I was academically. <laughs> you know, so uh college definitely i mean i think i got a 2.7 in college maybe i don't even think i graduated with a 3.0 you know that's all i'm saying so so but i make money more money than everybody that probably graduated up there in that college you know for sure so um so now Let's go back into the presentation here. Let me just go back to the, the thing I was going to in the beginning is the water, right? Now I sold you on the problem, right? By what? By education, by education, storytelling. I, I told a story about how I had to take care of my grandmother's swimming pool with my dad. I asked questions along the way. Hey, you guys, what was the meaning? What's it? I'm tying you in the conversation, making it more of an education conversation, raising awareness about the problem. And then I go like this and I say, and most people don't even know about this. So, you know, you can get, and now making them feel smarter than everybody else for taking advantage of this, right? Using facts, using data, logic. And, and guess what I did? I sold you on the problem. Do you guys believe what I just thought? Do you guys, after going through that conversation I just had with you, let me ask you, do you feel more inclined to drink alkaline water versus acidic water? Alkaline. Right? Mm -hmm. I've never heard of it, but I'll check it out. See, I just educated you, Phil. I'm glad we went over this, man. I'm interested. I'm going to look into it. Hey, worst thing that happens here, bro, is you, you get to have a healthier life after this, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you change other people's lives. It's the truth. It's the truth. I mean, that's why I, I, I drink it, you know? But then also, I got I just saved you a whole bunch of time, and I, maybe I helped your back out. Because now you don't got to carry all them cases of water around anymore. And you can just push the button on your phone, have it draw it up right up here. And let me ask you this. Do you, who wins in that situation? Everybody. Don't you think there's somebody out there that needs a job and they would love to have somebody to drink water to? Like you're providing another job for somebody else and you're saving you a bunch of time and money that you could put back into your business or put back into your family. And if you put it back into your business, guess what? You're putting it back into your family, right? So every second counts. That's why the millionaires win because they win the seconds. They don't win the minutes. They don't win the hours. They don't even win the day. Win the day. Forget win the day. Win every second. The day will take care of itself. And you got to get good at it. If you're not focused at being good at managing your time, you're not going to be good at it. How long does it take to be a professional at something? 10,000 hours, right? 10,000 hours, right? So are you a professional at time management? Have you spent 10,000 hours strategically studying 
and learning from the best people of time management on how to manage your time? And then have you spent 10,000 hours utilizing time management, like actually game planning stuff out? Have you spent 10,000 hours sitting in your office with the calendar out, with your daily planner, mapping out your day? Oh, scratch that. That's not going to work. Oh, let's try this tomorrow. And then tomorrow you try it out. And you're like, dude, I put way too many things in my calendar. There's no way I can get this all done. I used to do that with working out. I'm like, dude, check this workout out. Jay, watch this. We're going to do, uh, we're going to run in place for a minute. We're going to do 15 burpees. Then we're going to do uh, presses. And after we're done doing presses, while you're doing presses, you're going to do flies. And then while I'm doing flies, we're going to do these, these mountain climbers, okay? And we're going to triple, triple this up right here. We're going to do our abs and all this. And then after that, we're going to take a two-minute break, and we're going to do this, 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 and this. It looked good on paper, right? But I found out that was bad time management. I put too much, too much in my schedule. It was impossible for us to do the workout. Halfway through the workout, we didn't get none of the stuff done. So we needed to, A, needed to figure out a way to execute that plan better, which we tried and tried and tried. And by the end, we're like, dude, still, we're going to have to cut this back. So B, we had to adjust our plan a little bit, right? But that's part of the 10,000 hours of me getting better at time management. I'm trying, I'm actively thinking of ways to manage my time better. You have to spend 10,000 hours doing that. Then you become a professional at time management, right? Then you literally can, I mean, you can have a lot more control over your entire life because your life is just a bunch of minutes and seconds added up into hours and days. And you're going to have more control over your life because your life is your time. It's how you occupy your time, even mentally. Like sometimes you need a break mentally, but you're spending it driving to buy toothpaste, right? So when are you going to get that break? All that stuff, you know? So hopefully we can help everybody here become super efficient, professional time management people. And then if you can manage your time, then you could teach other people how to manage their time. And then you could be a great leader. But, you know, really, if, if you can't even manage yourself, how are you going to manage others? Right? Before you can manage someone else, you got to first be able to manage who? Ourself, right? So if you want to teach, teach somebody how to manage, what do you think one of the best things that somebody should be able to how to manage? Their time. Emotions, of course. You know, you need to manage your emotions. You can't be in leadership and not be able to manage your emotions. But you also can't be in leadership and not be able to manage your time. Right? So... Um, so the rebuttals, let's go into the rebuttals now. Why do we not want to get a rebuttal? Why do we not want to get a rebuttal? I don't want them. I don't want to get a rebuttal. So the way you don't get a rebuttal is you beat them before they ever give them to you. Okay, so we're going to go over that. But let's go over the philosophy of first why we don't want to ever get a rebuttal. Do a presentation. The guy goes, I can't afford that. Guess what he just did? He just spoke something out to the universe. And now he get, he's going to feel like he needs to defend his word. He's a man of his word. His wife's sitting right next to him. And he just told you that he can't afford it. Dude, he's going to feel like he's going to feel that he's going to need to defend and prove. All right. Now he's like, and now I got to prove to him why I can't afford it. So then he's going to start coming up with all these ideas and all these reasons of why he can't afford it. Why? Because he said it. And now he has to back it up. His wife's sitting right there. He told it to you. You don't want them words even getting out into the universe. Right? We need to think about it. Right, honey? You don't even want them to say we need to think about it. Because once you do, then they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. We're going to definitely need it because the bills and, oh, yeah, honey. And they're going to start justifying and filling away that they're going to have to sell you now because they said it. Now they got to sell you on it. So I don't even want them to say it. They're going to say it sometimes, but we have to be the best at, at not allowing them to say it. So handling, handling it proactively, okay? So there's three times in the presentation we're going to talk about today. There's more. There's other things you can do to help with this, okay? Along your presentation, you have to have built-in tie-downs as well. So when you're giving your presentation, if you're just talking at the person and you're just telling them telling's not selling telling is not selling me just sitting here telling 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 talking talking at you it's not selling i need to talk with you well what's a good conversation questions right a good conversationalist 
ask good questions. So this has to be an educational conversation. Really, it's, it's my sales presentation, but it's an educational conversation in which they don't feel like I, I, they feel like I'm educating them, but they don't feel like I'm lecturing them like a teacher and you just sit there and take notes, Joe and Mary, they're going to fall asleep on you. It has to be a conversation and a way to engage in conversations by asking them questions, right? I'll, I'll go into this that, but, but one of the questions that you want to keep throughout your whole presentation is, is tie downs. So does that make sense? Are we on the same page? Sound good, Joe? Sound good, Mary? Okay, great. Does this make sense so far to you, Joe? Are we on the same page? Mary, are you on the same page with, with this? Does it make sense why they put this in place? I'm sure you guys can see why the president was excited to have all the members involved into the program. Right, goes? Right, Joe? Those are tie downs. They need to be in your presentation. The more tie downs, the better almost. Like if you recorded your presentation, I would definitely like have a check mark going on on my sheet of paper of how many I did. You know, like if I was, if I recorded my presentation and I watched it, I would, I would actually go through and I was like, I did 16 tie downs, that one. I could probably do more. And then the next one, I add a couple more and next one, I add a couple more. And you want to get to at least know how many tie downs you're using and, and make that part of your, your presentation. That has nothing to do with the three things I'm going to get into. That's a little side tangent that questions sell, okay? And easy questions to ask the clients that make a big impact are tie down questions. Like, are we on the same page so far? Does that make sense to you, Joe? Why they set it up this way like that? Does that make sense to you, Joe? Okay, great. Mary, does it make sense to you why they put this in place for your husband and all the other members? Okay, great. Just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. That's how you do tie downs. Now, you could also do um, like a double tie down, right? And the double tie down will go like this. Mason, I can see you doing this. This is what I want you to try, okay? When you're meeting with the client and you're like, so you're like, so Joe, does it make sense why they set this up for you? And why Does that make sense to you, Mason? Excuse me, Mason? Does it make sense to you why they would put that in place for you to have 30,000 on your freedom of choice certificate? Excuse me? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. So the point is, guys, you go like this. You, you go, does it make sense? And whenever Joe or Mary, whoever you're talking to, even with Mary, does it make sense, Mary, why they blah, 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 whatever you say to them? Are we on the same page? Does it make sense? You know, uh, whatever you want to say. When they say yes, all you do is you just go, excuse me? Oh, okay, great. Just wanted to make sure you're on the same page. And they, they're like, they're, does that make sense why they put this in place for you? And then Mason goes, yeah. I'm like, excuse me? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, great. Just want to make sure you're on the same page. So he had to say it what? Twice, Twice right? That's the best. You don't use it all the time, but I would use it like at the end when I'm trying to close them down on a freedom of choice certificate, double tie down that one down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And I'll say, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Just make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Say, okay. Great. Just want to make sure we're on the same page. Good. So that's a little uh, thing you could do with tie downs. There's also subtle tie downs. I call it an indirect tie down, and that's where you know you're doing a presentation. And you say, so guys, you need to use tie downs. Does that make sense why you need to use tie downs? Because when you use tie downs, it gets the client more engaged. See right there, I just did an indirect tie down. I went like this. I was like, doesn't it make sense why you need to use indirect tie downs? Because, and I didn't let you respond. See, I said, doesn't it make sense why you, use, use, need, why you need to use indirect tie downs? Because what it does is it keeps the client engaged. So I threw that tie down in there, but I didn't make you say yes. Did I make you say yes? No, that's an indirect tie down. A direct tie down, like, so Joe, does it make sense why they need us to use tie downs when we're doing our presentation to keep the client engaged? Does that make sense to you, Joe? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, great. Just want to make sure, you know, that you, we're on the same page with how important that that part is. Right. And Mary, you can see how important the tie downs will be as well. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. That's a direct tie down. When I make them give me a direct answer back. Okay. An indirect tie down is when you hit them with the, does that make sense? But you keep it moving. You don't even really need them to say yes. Sometimes they might. And then you can hit them with what? The double tie down, double tie down. And that's when you hit them, excuse me? Uh, okay, great, just wanna make sure we're on the same page. And what you wanna do is have them all three going on in there. If you're doing all indirects, you're not gonna close them. If you're doing all directs, then you're gonna to be too controlling and they're not gonna buy you, you know? So you wanna mix them all in there. Okay, now let's get into the meat and potatoes, right? So there's three parts, like I said, and actually I'm not gonna get into the meat and potatoes yet, okay? We're gonna go over Steve Greer's four steps to handling a rebuttal. Steve Greer is the CEO of the company, just so you guys know, Steve Greer. And from there, he got promoted to the CEO. But for many, many, many years, uh, I've been really good friends with him. He was a CEO. I was an RGA. I'm sorry. He was an SGA. I was an RGA with the company. So his agency would come visit us. We would go visit him uh, anytime we were at these uh, vacations that we would go to and these conventions that the company sends you on. Um, I would always you know, hang out with him. And, 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 and he always ended up being a good friend. He came to my wedding. And this is what before he was a CEO, you know, we already had a good relationship one time and he came out there and visited and he went over with us his steps to closing. And I remember it vividly. So he said, you know, what I said originally, you don't want the rebuttals. Okay. You don't want them. You want to beat them. So they never give them to you. But if they ever give them to you, you need to have a place to go back to where you already covered it. So the, the first step in handling the rebuttal is handling proactively in your presentation. There's three places in your presentation you handle these proactive rebuttals. The first one you're gonna handle is called, I don't need it. I don't need life insurance. Where do you beat that proactively? You, re -beat, you beat that as soon as you walk in the door. You're gonna build rapport with them. You say, I'm Tom Veen, American Income. Here's our stats, look, a great company, blah, 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 A plus rated, all that. You guys new to the area? You, you guys, how long have you lived around here? Oh, it's a beautiful home. You have family in the area, your parents still alive. You know, how long have you worked down at XYZ company? Mary, where do you work at? Oh, that's interesting. My mom used to do that. on what they devolve their time into to get referrals off them later. There's rhyme and reason behind all five questions that you have to ask them. That's why you got to ask them five report building questions. But after you ask them five report building questions, you're going to say, now, Joe and Mary. Oh, boy. Hey, you're back.
We can't hear you. Hey, you're on mute. All right, how about now? Yeah. But the last thing that we heard was um, the I don't need it rebuttal and then when to beat it is right away. And that's the last thing I got. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so what I said was that the I don't need it rebuttal is the first rebuttal that you're gonna get, okay? Um, and, and when you beat the I don't need it rebuttal, it's at the beginning of the presentation after you build rapport. Did I go, did you guys hear that yet? Yeah, that part and then, and then it cut off right after that. Yeah, so after you build rapport, then it goes into the, um, then you go into why we're here. So Joe and Mary, you know, let me tell you why we're here. Your president, John Smith, contracted through our company, you know, American Income Life, to make sure that uh, all the members had guaranteed permanent benefits. The problem and concern that they ran into is that uh, most companies provide benefits to their employees. You know, Joe, when you work for a company, do you know how most companies have workplace benefits set up for everybody? Yeah, well, well, the problem that they were running into and the concern is that what typically happens to those benefits whenever you quit, get fired, or retire? What happens, Joe? They go away, exactly. So that was one of the major problems and concerns. So they contracted through us to make sure that all the members had their guaranteed permanent life benefits. So Joe, while we're out here today, you know, I'll make sure I answer your questions, blah, 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 blah. So the point of this whole conversation that we just had with the client is we told them that, uh, yeah, I know you have workplace benefits. And in fact, that's the reason why we're here. See that? So if they ever give you a rebuttal and they're like, well, I don't need this because I already have stuff through work. You say, well, actually, Joe, if you could remember when I went over with you, the, the main reason why, you know, we have this letter and the, the main reason why your president signed off, the main reason why your president, the main reason, and then the problem is actually the. They go away, right? See, the key is getting them to tell you as well. Because if they ever give you a rebuttal, you got that to go back to, right? But I'll get into that in a minute. But the whole point of it is, is we have to cover that at the beginning. And it has to be pretty aware and they have to be, it has to be pretty apparent to them that the only reason why you're here is that I have workplace benefits. Like that's why you're here. That's not the only reason, but the main, one of the main reasons is you have workplace benefits. That's the problem. So they can't give you the like, oh, I don't need it because I have workplace benefits. You say, actually, that's, that's why they set it up for you. It's because you have workplace benefits. You know, does that make sense, guys? Anyways, yeah. so the three places you're going to have this rebuttal, the, the, first, the first one is I don't need it. And the way we handle it is in that paragraph at the beginning of telling them why we are here. So the, the, the second rebuttal you could get, besides I don't need it, is going to be, I want to think about it. That's the second rebuttal you're going to get. I want to think about it. This pro you're cutting out again. Yeah, we lost the time. The, the second thing we're going to get is I want to think about it. Okay. How okay, about now? Okay. All right. Thanks. You're so uh, the second rebuttal is going to be, I want to think about it. And how do we handle that proactively? You talk about like, oh, it's their enrollment. It's like yeah. their enrollment period. Sorry. I wasn't sure if that was a question directed at us or not. <laughs> yeah 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 no no that that that's just an open-ended question so um if you want to let them know at the beginning definitely you say so you know today during your enrollment period if the benefits make sense we need to make sure we get you enrolled into the benefits or you know during your enrollment period we'll make sure we answer all of your questions you know while we're out here today 
So definitely reminding them this is their enrollment period is huge, right? Huge. Um, booking the appointment, you can also add a lot of verbiage in there, letting them know, you know, that this is their enrollment period, you know, you, you know, you're busy, all that kind of stuff. But there's a part in our script that's specifically built to handle this. And, and that's the paragraph after the mandatory read off letter. So basically, you got it. So basically, mm -hmm. that paragraph, if you nail it properly, like if you're going to look at the client in the eyes, like especially if you're doing virtual, you're going to be looking into a camera. Here's the hard thing, though. They're on thing. Like if I wanted to look at, 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 at Gabby, I would have to like turn here and like look at her. But now I'm not looking at her, right? Screen's over here. So virtual, you got to remember like, if my camera is here, but my screen is down here, I can't be looking at them right here. Where do I need to be looking at them? Right there. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? So you actually got to say, so, so basically, I, I wouldn't get my face in the screen like that, you know? But I might lean in a little bit, you know? So basically, Joe and Mary, uh, if as I go through the benefits and, and you're nodding your head, you're thinking, wow, these are great benefits. They, they fit a need for my family. You know, then they're, they're gonna ask you to enroll into the benefits today while we're out here. On the flip side, as I go through the benefits, you're nodding your head and you think there are great benefits and you can see the value, but it just doesn't fit a need for your family right now. They're gonna ask you to try to not, not qualify, but either way, they do ask you to make a decision today, just in fairness to all these other members that are still waiting to have their chance to enroll into the benefits. So uh, the best thing about the benefits though, Joe and Mary, is they're pretty much a no brainer. So you're gonna know one way or not, uh, whether it, it fits a need for you and your family. They just didn't want me to get all the way to the end with you guys. And then, and then you guys say something silly, like, uh, like you wanted to think about it or something like that. So what they ask is this, did you just make a decision to us and to me, uh, yes or no, either way, during your insert your enrollment period today okay uh, does that make sense to you joe mary all right perfect fair enough great and then by the end of everything i they're they're going to ask us to just get a quick review from you guys okay um, they want us to make sure that they give us good feedback to your organization leader you know and all the people that are responsible for this program just to get good feedback and, and, and any feedback at all of how I did today. They just wanted to make sure I didn't come on a Zoom call and uh, you know start, uh, I don't know, start say, making up a whole bunch of stuff or giving you the wrong information. So um, we have, we, if, if you wouldn't mind, we'll go on and do a quick Google review of, of how everything went you know, uh, after I'm done. I can give you the information for that. Is that fair enough, guys? Okay, perfect. Not always. No, no, I'm, I'm going to hand that in a minute. That's a good question, though. That's a good one to have in your back pocket, but that's not the go to. That's not the go to. See how that? I just did the script. <laughs> I just did the script. That's all I did, right? Just put my little personality on it, a little bit, whatever you can do. <clears throat> You definitely don't want to stand there like a robot. And remember, guys, this is not selling anybody. Like if I stood here and I didn't move and we just talked like this, do you see what's going on? It's not good, right? Yeah, you look weird. So you got to have some motion. You have to. Motion creates emotion, right? And this is an emotional purchase. <clears throat> so um, the third place where we need to beat the rebuttal now is, is going to be, I can't afford it, right? So how do we proactively handle that? And when does that, that literally comes in the play right after you're done with the mandatory read off letter. You just look at the client, you say now this, you say, now, Joe and Mary, they always make me ask. So 
what what's what's the uh, paragraph after the mandatory read off letter how do you what's the lead into that mason said it so basically right everybody knows the paragraph after manual so basically if as i go based proactive the read off handle the robot i want to the lead in for i uh i can't afford it they always make me ask that's the transition the segue whatever you want to call it now joe and mary they always make me ask if you were to set aside five dollars for every hundred dollars that you took home and you set that aside to protect your family would that take food off your table or drastically change your lifestyle no, most people say it wouldn't. They just didn't want us to show you something that you would need, but you just wouldn't be able to afford. I'll just say five. Yeah. You gotta be like pretty specific. In this presentation, you wanna avoid um, vague words. Like sometimes, well, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it'll pay out if you die. Like what? The fuck you, you want me to give you a hundred dollars a month and you're pretty sure for the rest of my life, you know, you can't use pretty sure sometimes, maybe I think so, sort of, kind of, you have to use like, no matter what, for sure, guaranteed, no, it'll always be in place. Always. You'll never have to worry. It's in place forever guaranteed. It'll never go up. It'll never go down. You never have to worry. Like the, that's what people want. They want certainty and you have to use words that are like, for sure, you know? So you wanna to try to avoid anything that gives any ambiguity as much as you possibly can, right? So Joe, they always make me ask, if you were to set aside $5 out of every $100 that you took home and you set that aside to protect your family, would that drastically take food off your, that, would, that, would that take food off your table or drastically change your lifestyle? Yeah, you say, no, and I'll say most members say it wouldn't, or I'll just say, I'll just say, no, okay, great. They just didn't want us to show you something that you would need, but you wouldn't be able to afford. And that's it. Pretty simple. Now, if you're going to talk about the hour power, you could talk about the hour power too. So I'll give you a, a, a secondary way to proactively handle <clears throat> this. Now keep in mind, you just told them they, they're gonna set aside 5% of their income, right? When you do the needs analysis and it comes up with the recommendations, a lot of times it's gonna come up with 5% or lower or lower. Sometimes it only recommends to use 4%. And then if you show them five and they don't wanna do it, then you could reduce it to 4% or 3%. And here's the thing. I just asked you five minutes ago, if you set aside five out of every hundred, it would be cool. This is only three out of every hundred. So this is even more cooler than that. That's my philosophy on it. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Right? There's got, yeah, I'm not going to say that to the client like that, but you know, that's the philosophy is like, if I ask you five is, and then I show you four and then we reduce it to three, you told me five was good. I just saved you two, you know, it's not going to take any cheese out of your macaroni. Is it Joe? I know you can't wait to use that one, Mason. <laughs> You say, and here's what I, instead of saying it to Joe, here's how I would position it. I would, I would be like, you want to know what? So I met with a client the other day and was in the same position. You know, I was like, oh, I, you know, I was thinking about affordability because we needed to make sure, because this family needed, so we needed to make sure that they like got their foot in the door with the benefits, Joe, but we needed to keep it comfortable for them. And, uh, and at the end, I remember he told me, he's like, you know what, Tommy, I, I got to really be real with you. $80 a month is not going to take any cheese out of my macaroni. I was like, oh my God, that was probably like the funniest thing any client ever told me before. And for you, I'm probably going to take any cheese out of your macaroni either, right? Right, Mason? See how I brought it in there like that? Instead of being like, Mason, it ain't going to take no cheese out of your macaroni. Now I'm like coming at them. See, I'm coming at them. I come around on them. 
I do third party, and then I really catch them from behind. He didn't even know that was coming. See how the first way I told you was way better than the second way? You guys see what I'm saying or no? Does that make sense? Yeah, I already wrote it down for sure. I'm going to use it. Yeah, I'm not going to come at him. I'm not going to say this. Come on, you can afford this. I'm going to say, you know, I'm out with a client. Like, instead of saying it to them, you call, it's third party selling, I, I call it third party selling, you know? Um, so, anyways, uh, um, uh, what else? Um, so, 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 the second way to handle I can't afford it proactively, if you don't want to use the $5 out of every 100 line, you can use this instead. And, and if you're with a union member, someone that gets paid weekly, this is just something to have in your pocket. But also, you can use this as a rebuttal later on. Like if they're still telling you I can't afford it, you can pull this out as a, as a reactive rebuttal too to try and make them understand the concept of what we're doing for them. So here's what I mean by that is, is it's called the hour of power. You probably heard it before. And basically you just say, so Joe and Mary, they always make me ask, you know what I'm about to hit them. What if I say that I'm about to proactively handle, I can't afford it. Right. Joe and Mary, they always make me ask it. it um, imagine we walked in the work on Monday and the boss pulled everybody aside and said that they're going to give everybody an extra hour this week. So instead of taking home 40, we're going to take home 41 hours. Well, that might feel pretty good taking home an extra hour for the week, but we're probably not going to run home and uh, immediately book a trip to take the whole family to Disneyland and then come back and go Cadillac shopping. <laughs> probably got one because we got one hour extra in our pay for the week, right? Now on the flip side, let's say the boss pulled everybody aside and he said that we're going to have to cut everybody back by an hour this week. So instead of taking home 40, we take home 39 for the week. Well, might make a little bit of a difference, but we're probably not going to run home and tell the family we have to cancel all of our vacations and now we have to actually put the car up for sale. So what they figure is that whether we got an extra hour in our pay or maybe we had to get cut back by that hour, either way, isn't gonna make that big of a difference. So what they said, is let's put that one hour that doesn't make that big of a difference and put it towards something that would. So Joe, and then you just go into the first concern that they had was funeral and final arrangements and you go into your presentation. Make sense there? So it's the hour power. So let's say they're rebuttaling you, you know, and, and you, 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 you did the $5 question with them. They were like, yeah, I can do five. Blah, blah. And then you show them all the stuff, right? And then they're like, oh, I, I can't afford it. Like, all right, let's reduce it down. Like, I can't afford it. And then you hit them with a rebuttal. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just, you know, timing of everything right now, Tommy, I just don't know if I could really afford I didn't plan on, you know, hundred and some extra dollars right now. I don't know if I could afford that. I said, well, let's think of it like this, Joe. Let's say you walked into work on Monday. And the boss put everybody aside, right? And you make $1,000 a week. So you make what? What is that? $25 an hour, right? Pulled you aside, 25, you know? So that's basically $100 a month right there. Pulled you aside. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it. We're gonna give you an extra hour. You're not gonna buy a new car. You're gonna cut back on You're not gonna sell your car. What hour, Joe? What do you think will make that? You're not gonna take any food off your table. We're not gonna take cheese out of your mac and money. Put 20, what's one hour either way, right? You agree with that? Sure, you agree with that, right? That's all we're talking about here for you. One hour, you set that one hour aside to protect the other 39 hours, right? So basically, you, when you walk into work on Monday, you take your first hour and you, you put that aside for your family. And the other 39 hours a week, you put it in everything else. So you start making sense of it for them on how it can be affordable, you know? Um, so I wanted to give you the two ways to proactively handle I can't afford it. Uh, whatever one you want to use, use it, but, you know, handle it proactively before you show them the cost, before you show them the cost. I do it right after the paragraph after the mandatory read-off letter. I go right into, they always make me ask. So for me, it's like literally like, so basically, and then blah, 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 blah. Then I tell them about the Google review. 
And then I go, now they always make me ask. If you set aside $5 out of 100, or if you went into work and they pulled you aside and they gave you an extra hour, or they cut you either way, okay? So it's nice to have those. Even as a reactive approach, you can bring that up, okay? Now, so back to the, the lesson. The lesson says that there's four steps to handling the rebuttal, right? Four steps to handling the rebuttal. The first step is what? Proactively covering it in the presentation, okay? That's step number one. We just did it. So let's review step one real quick. Proactively beating the rebuttals in your presentation. That's step number one. And we do so by three, three, three things. A was we beat, I don't need it at the beginning when we tell them why their union president contracted through us, make sure they have guaranteed permanent coverage because the problem was is the benefits you have through your company, most employers, they go away. That was a problem, that was a concern. That's the first part. So that why we are here paragraph, why we are here paragraph at the beginning, before you play the introduction video and after the rapport. You build rapport, tell them why we're here, play an introduction video. Build rapport, tell them why we're here. Tell them why we're here, that's, what, that's the part that we proactively beat, I don't need it. Proactively beating, I have work coverage. You have work coverage. That's the reason why we're here. Second one is paragraph after the mandatory read-off letter. So basically, so we beat that. Third one is the $5 question or the hour power, whatever one you want to use. And that, that's the, uh, they always make me ask, right? So we just, reviewed that again pretty thoroughly. I think you guys got it. I think we're good on that, right? Step one's down, you got step one, good. Now, now step two is this. Step two is they give you a rebuttal. What do you do? So step two, you get the rebuttal and what do you do? How do you react to a rebuttal, guys? What's, what's the, you're always calm. Always calm. Do you disagree with them? You understand them? Like you say, oh, I understand. Yes. Yes. You never say no. Oh, no, Joe. Oh, no. You don't let the word no come out of your mouth. Um, what, what, you, what you do, uh, if, if you, if you want to write this down or if you have it, just here, uh, sell or be sold by Grant Cardone. Mason, this is your number one book you need to get, bro. You'll, 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 you'll eat this a lot. You'll love it. Eight in the morning with Fios and your cornflakes. Grant Cardone. So you don't know who Grant Cardone is as a serious concern in the first place. That's like wanting to go to the NFL and you don't know who Tom Brady is. Like, what? You know what the NFL is? <laughs> You know, if you want to go somewhere in business, you got to get familiar with the, the, the famous people that are in business. If I wanted to be a pianist, I'd want to know all the famous piano people, you know. If I wanted to be an NBA player, I'd have NBA people up on my walls. So if you want to be famous in business, you got to start getting familiar with all the famous business people, the people that get it done, like a Grant Cardone, Tony Robbins, all the rich people, Elon Musk, you know, you listen to all that stuff. And, you know, you can hang out with billionaires. I hang out with billionaires every morning. I find a billionaire on YouTube and I listen to whatever he's talking about. He don't need, I don't need to talk back to him. I sometimes like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, Joe. Yeah, cool. They can't hear me, but it's like I'm having a conversation. It's like I hang out with a billionaire for at least five, 10 minutes every morning. You can too. You can too. You know, you can pull up Ray Dalio and listen to him talk and he'll tell you what he's thinking. He gives you got billionaires that are online telling you how they became a billionaire. And we're listening to fucking little Yachty. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the reality of the world. Isn't that crazy? Spend 10 minutes with a billionaire every, every day and watch what happens. If you wanted to get in front of a billionaire, how the heck would you do it? How? 
you'd have to go find somebody that would actually spend time with you. They probably got bodyguards. Like, how are you going to get into their facilities? How are you going to get in front of Robert Kraft? How are you going to get in front of Elon Musk? How are you going to get in front of uh, these people? How are you going to get in front of Mark Cuban? You ain't. You ain't going to do it. You're not getting in front of them. They don't got time for you. But they, they just put, there's 10, there's, there's uh, a thousand hours of them online telling you everything that you would need to know. If you met with them anyways, you'd ask them questions. And the answers to those questions are already on the videos they already put online because everybody asks them the same questions all the time. So we made a video and put it out there for you to second answer them every day. You guys feel me? So anyways, Grant Cardone, sell or be sold. Number one rule of sales is what? The number one rule of sales, always agree. Always agree. So that means never disagree. <laughs> so whenever they give you the rebuttal, step number two is agree and proceed. Step number two, agree, but proceed. Don't agree and stop. Don't disagree. So what that means is they hit you with the rebuttal and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I can agree with you for sure, right? Now, but I'm still going to proceed to close your ass down. Agree and then still proceed to close your ass down like you didn't even hear what they said. Okay, great. But let me explain it to you like this. That does. That makes a lot of sense there, Joanne. I can, I can agree with you on that. I understand where you're coming from. Definitely makes a lot of sense. So what we can do then is we'll just make sure we get your foot in the door, but we'll make sure we keep her comfortable at the same time. She's like, did this guy not hear what I just said? Well, like you said, let's go over the, the, like, what was the most important thing about the program to you? You said it was the freedom of choice certificate. And, and one of the things you said about that, what do you think was that was the, it, the, it handles everything right there on the spot? Well, what we'll do, we'll make sure we get your foot in the door with the freedom of choice certificate today. And then uh, later on down the line, if you need to make adjustments, we could also make adjustments to your program. And I'm just, and proceed to whatever you're closing on. Now, I'm going to show you where we're going to proceed to step three in this one, okay? But throughout your presentation, always agree. Like anytime they hit, so, so proactively handle rebuttal. They give you the rebuttal. Step number two, agree and proceed. And you agree and proceed to where? Step three. Agree and proceed to step three. You could use a fill foul found on step two as well. I understand how you feel. Some of my best clients actually felt the same way. Me and my wife were thinking they feel almost like felt the same way. But what we found is that by enrolling into the benefits today actually was one of the best decisions we ever made, you know, because there's really only three times people ever think about it too. And I just didn't want to be late. And now I'm just so happy because if I would have took another year, it would have cost me more. I might not be able to get it. We just had our son, blah, 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 blah. So you could go into the feel felt found too. You can say, you know, understand how you feel. Most of my best clients felt the same way, but, but really what they found though was, you know, that uh, they needed the program and blah, blah, blah. So, but step number two is what? Agree and proceed to step three. You ready for step three? Step three is pretty easy because you already did step one. Okay. All you do on step three is call it, you, you, you call it a go back to where you already beat that rebuttal in the presentation and remind them of it. Oh, that makes sense. I understand where you, you need to think about it. I understand. I agree. Makes sense. However, if you could remember how they uh, ask us to go over the mandatory read-off letter with you, I could even pull that back up for us. You know, the reason they did this is because they wanted to do it on an enrollment basis, and they felt they could do it like that because they already checked and approved the benefits. And if you remember back to the letter, that's why they asked us to make that decision yes or no today. So they rather you, uh, you know, if we're going to get your foot in the door, we'd rather get your foot in the door and get the paperwork foot out while we're here today, because you know tomorrow's not promised. But either way, they do want you to make that decision, yes or no, while we're in here. So does that make sense? So you already went over it with them, so you just go back and revisit it. It's like so easy. But if you also have the I want to think about that rebuttal, 
then you could also slap some of that verbiage in there or hit them with it. But you remember I went over, man, to read off letter. They just want to do it on a roam basis to make sure while we're out here that we didn't get, you know, really, I want to think about it. They'd rather you just say yes or no. I would even just say, you know, and if they make sense, we'll make sure we get your foot in the door with the benefits today, I think, you know. Um, and Joe, they, they, they figured they could do it this way because they checked and, and approved all the benefits. Uh, to make sure that they're the best benefits for you. I know sometimes it feels like you want to think about it, but uh, we actually work with over 30,000 different organizations and each organization that we work with has a, a, a financial advisor and a board of directors. And um, these advisors and these directors, they have to check and approve these benefits for their organization before we're able to get these benefits into that organization, right? So we have over 30,000 organizations. And what they do is they triple check the benefits every year. So you could say that we, you know, basically if you have 30,000 organizations, triple check of benefits each year, over 30,000, we pretty much can say that these benefits have been checked over 100,000 times by professionals and um, you know, uh, leaders of organizations to make sure they're the best benefits before they even came out here to meet with you today. If there is something better, I would be here and going over that with you today. Um, so I understand like sometimes it feels like you, you need to think about it or you want to think about it. But if you do actually think about it, they already thought about it for us. So that's why they felt they could do it on an enrollment basis here today. You know, Joe and Mary, blah, 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 blah. You know, and you can go into it. It makes sense, dude. They, they they need to think about it. You need to. I got we. Are you a financial advisor? Right. I got a hundred thousand. You know, so puts it in perspective a little bit for them, right? So so step three is go back to where you already beat that rebuttal in your presentation, and basically just remind them of it. You could literally repeat yourself verbatim what you said there. Oh, you remember? Let me just go over to Panda Tour, read off letter, paragraph after. You could go over with them again. Then add some of your rebuttal. That's why you got to know your script because your script has a rebuttal that's specifically built for I want to think about it. And you can't just say it like a robot. You got to be able to throw it in, in, in with a little bit of you know compassion and passion. So. Um, the fourth thing now, fourth step, you don't just look at them after that, right? We got to continue the procedure. We proceed to step four, and we're going to proceed to uh, assume the sale. It's like this. Oh, you want to think about it. Oh, yeah. Well, remember, we already talked about how you can't think about it. Yeah, so we'll just get your foot back in the door today and we'll get you rolling to the benefits. You, see, you really want it to be like that. It don't have to be this long, drawn out, like serious, you know, conversation, really. It could, it could be more of a nonchalant, like, type of deal, almost. Like, oh, you silly, you can't think about it. Don't you remember? We already talked about that. So what they want you to do is make a decision, yes or no, either way. So what we'll do for you and your family, Joe, is we'll make sure that you get your foot in the door with these benefits, but we'll make sure we keep it comfortable at the same time. That's the line right there. That's step four, that's the step four line. That's the step four line. So what we need to do today is we need to make sure that we get your foot in the door with these benefits, but also make sure we keep it comfortable at the same time. What we're going to do today, you don't even say what we need to do. So what we're going to do for you today is we will make sure we get your foot in the door with the benefits, but we'll also make sure we keep them comfortable for you at the same time. Now, Joe and Mary, uh, you know, and then you just go into whatever you're going to go into. I would start filling out the application. So Joe and Mary, everybody always wants to try and qualify for the benefits, but unfortunately, not everyone can. So I need to make sure you can qualify first. No, this is at the end when they give you rebuttals. 
you already went over the needs analysis. You already went over what they need. You went over what it costs. And they said, I don't need it. They said, I want to think about it. They said, I can't afford it. Right? Like, all right, here, Joe, here's what we're going to get you set up with. Boom, boom. You, and he's like, you know what, Mason? You know, we need to think about it. Right? So what's the three steps when he said, I want to think about it, guys? Well, think, think, the good thing is you did step one. The thing, if they get you what I want to think about it and you did not do step one, you're pretty much screwed and you're going to be fighting with them the whole time, you know? So you have to do step one and proactively handle it. When they say, I want to think about it, what do you do? Sit back, relax, no problem, man. I agree. I makes sense. I understand where you're coming from. But then after you agree, then you what? Proceed to step three, which is you go back to their thing. You handle where it was. Let's say they want to think about it. You say, do you remember the mandatory read-off letter paragraph after? Well, basically they wanted to make sure, and I'll read them. So what they say is, as I go through the benefits, you're not in your head. You're thinking you want to, uh, they may want to enroll today. If I go through the benefits, you're not in your head. You think it's not a good fit. They want you to not, either way, they want you to make a decision yesterday, make affairs to all the other members, waiting to enroll. Best thing is, it's a no brainer. You're going to know one way or not, whether it's a need for event. Just don't want to get to the end and say something silly, like you want to think about it. So for today, guys, what we'll do is we'll make sure, we're going to make sure that you guys get your foot in the door with the benefits, but we'll make sure we keep it comfortable at the same time. Okay, now, Joe, everybody always wants to try and qualify for the benefits, but the thing is, not everybody can, so I need to make sure you guys can even qualify first. Joe, were you ever, ever, ever at Alcoholics Anonymous or AA? You ever used narcotics, set up or hallucinogens? You ever, ever have a DUI, DWI? You ever arrested for any felonies or misdemeanors? Do you fly uh, planes as a pilot? Do you race cars, motorcycles? Do you jump out of airplanes? Do you scuba dive, skydive? Do you skinny dip? I just want to know because I'll come over and hang out with you guys. I didn't know you rolled like that. What if they say, like, where some people will? What? Once they say rebuttal, you go back to the people. Rebuttal, what if they just went through the station? <clears throat> and then they'd be like, yeah, but I still don't think I can afford it. Yep. What they just say to oh, you. yeah, I, I can understand where you're coming from, for sure. So, you know, uh, Joe, the thing is, you're the man that gets up every day, puts food on the table, goes to work. So you put your own twist on it. No, no, then I hit him with the I can't afford it rebuttal. That's in the damn script, verbatim. I don't make up my own shit. I give it verbatim, whatever it says in there. What's the I can't afford it rebuttal? Hit them with the I can't afford it rebuttal. And then if they don't want to do it again, then I'll start maybe reducing them down. Okay, great. Well, you know what we do is, is, is yeah, I know, here's what you do when they can't afford it, okay? Like, oh, you can't afford it. All right, great. Well, you, you know, right now we had them set up to get what? Freedom of choice certificate. We had them get it set up to get income protection, mortgage protection. You know, we had policies on the kids, all boom, right? Okay, great, Joe and Mary. Well, if I could go back, Joe, out of all the benefits that we, that we set up for you today, uh, you told me that the freedom of choice certificate is most important for you. Mary, out of all the benefits, you told me the income protection is most important for you. So what we're going to do today, we're going to make sure that you get your foot in the door with these two benefits, since they're the most important to you right now. And then later on down the line, once you get your foot in the door, we can make adjustments to the program because it'll be yours. So you can add family members. We can increase your benefits. You can decrease your benefits. We can make any adjustment you need to down the line. But what they always recommend is while you're young and while you're healthy to lock in with the benefits while you still can. The only thing that happens with these programs with any kind of insurance is as you get older, what typically happens to the cost of life insurance when you get older, Joe? typically goes up. And then, and then typically what happens to the, to, to your health as you get older, Joe, Mary typically goes down. So what happens is members get older and a lot of times um, they, they need to get the programs, but it costs a lot more than it should. And they can't even afford it. And then sometimes I'll meet with members who they might be able to afford it, but it don't matter how much money they have. Cause you don't buy life insurance with money. You buy life insurance with your health. That's how you get into it. You pay for it with money, but you buy into it with your health and they don't have the health to get into. You could have all the money in the world. I met with clients, they just couldn't get it as much as they needed, as much as they wanted it. Cause why? Cause their health, right? So while you're young, while you're healthy, they always recommend to get as much as you can while you can. So what we'll do today for you is make sure that, you know, cause what I don't want, what we don't want is this program is not designed to cause a major financial burden on your family. But if, but if, if we don't have this program in place, that can cause a bigger financial burden on your family. So what we need to do today is we'll make sure that neither one of those happens. We'll make sure we get your foot in the door with the benefits, but we'll keep it comfortable at the same time. 
you got to be ready to go. Like it's a, this is a, this is a ten round, twelve round bout, man. They're gonna be coming back at me for more. I'm ready to go. You know, you gotta have them all up your sleeve. You gotta know when the guys. When's your birthday? Okay, good. So you're 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 forty. You're gonna be fifty. You're gonna be you're forty nine. You're gonna be fifty. You know what happens to the rates when you go up when you go from forty nine to fifty? They go up, right? So check it out. Right now, this program that you want to get, it's one hundred and five dollars a month. Okay. If you wait one year, it's going to be $110 a month. doesn't seem like that much money, but if you're 50 years old and you're going to live to be, let's say, uh, 80, let's just say 80, you know, hopefully it's a lot longer. That's 30 years you're going to pay into this. Well, $5 a month times 12 months is $60, right? $60 times, times 10 years is $600 times 30 years, 60, that's, that's $1,800 right there, 1800, that's basically $2,000. So Joe, I know sometimes it feels like you wanna to wait to save a little bit of money, you know, cause if you wait four or five months from now or a year, you might, you might save this hundred dollars a month, right? But what you're gonna lose now is this, you're gonna end up paying an, an additional $1,800 for something that you wouldn't have to. And, and now you're gonna have, your family's not gonna have coverage for, for a whole nother year. So sometimes you might feel like you're saving money by waiting, but a lot of times for our families, it ends up the cost of waiting is a lot higher than the cost of enrolling today. There's a cost of doing something and there's a cost of doing nothing. In this situation, a lot of times, the cost of doing nothing greatly outweighs the cost of doing something. The cost of doing something today, Joe and Mary, is what? Ten dollars a week. You reduced them down to ten dollars a week. Now I understand. Ten dollars a week may sometimes feel like it's unaffordable. Sometimes it might feel like it's tough to come up with ten dollars a week. I can understand. However, could you imagine how difficult it's going to be for Mary to have to come up with ten? all by herself. So sometimes it might be difficult, but you think we got Joe and Mary, we're both here together. And all we got to do together is just come up with $10 a week versus and that but Joe and Mary, we can't afford not to have this in place. The cost of doing something is ten dollars. I'll give you Colin Powell. Colin Powell's cost of American uh, businesses, the American people, the American government, millions and billions of dollars, but it is indecision. And that's what we're talking about today is a decision. It's not the right decision or the wrong decision either. It's just indecision. We need to make a decision, Joe. I like that you said you're even not here to make a financial burden, but what you protect you from the financial burden is definitely going to happen. This program is not designed to cause a financial burden on your family, but we cannot. Uh, allow the lack of having this program in place to cause a bigger financial burden on your family. So what we'll do today is make sure neither one of those happen. You know, remember, you know, the, sometimes it might feel like it's unaffordable, $10 a week. But if you think about it, or uh, uh, $10 a week, but um, if you can't afford $10 a week now, could you imagine how is Mary going to be able to afford ten thousand dollars at one of the worst times of her life so i know sometimes it feels like it's unaffordable but if you think about it we can't afford not to have this in place the cost of doing nothing is a lot more than the cost of doing something two of you together can come up with ten dollars a week a lot easier than she's going to come up with ten thousand by herself you see how powerful that stuff is this is called the tip of the iceberg just for this is training class in your second week. Okay. I'm probably giving you probably more information than I should be at this point, but I want you to know, this is the tip of the iceberg. I am full of these things. I can sit here for the next six hours and rebuttal you swear to God. 
I'm not even kidding you. I'll sit here for six hours and rebuttal you on everything. See, I just threw that up there nonchalantly real quick. Oh yeah, bus plus, if you want to think about it. Oh, you want to think about it. Okay, your birthday's in six months. So if I come back here six months from now and you want to do the same exact thing, first we have to go through all the paperwork again. We already filled all the paperwork out. That's another thing. They want to rebuttal you. Like, well, Joe, Mary, we already have all the paperwork filled out. That's why you want to assume the sale. If you assume the sale, you fill all the paperwork out. That's another reason for me just to throw it in there. It's not the, my, okay, we're gonna buy life insurance because you already filled the paperwork out. They're gonna get life insurance so when they die, their family's protected. But it's another added reason for her to be like, yeah, you're right, dude. I really don't feel like calling up another company or having Brian or Alex come all the way back to my house and do this all again. Like we already got it filled out. Let's just get it now. What's the difference? Six months from now or now? Here's the difference. Six months from now, you're going to pay an extra $1,800 for the same amount of coverage, right? I'm saving you eight. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get, if you were my dad, here's a great one. If you were my dad and he wanted to do this, I would, I would, I would tell him this. I would make sure like, this is what I would do for my family. Like I would save them the money. Who's going to argue with you? You just saved them $1,800. It's true, man. Without you, they never would have known that shit. And then you tell them, like, if you were my dad, this is what I'd recommend for you, right? If you were my family member, and if this is my mom, this is my cousin, you know, this is what my dad is. That's what they want to hear when you tell them stuff like that. So what's step number four? Assume, Assume the sale. That's it. Assume that sale, right? Assume the sale. So... What's some good verbiage to, to assume in the cell? Everyone always wants to try and roll into the benefits, but unfortunately, not everyone can. Everyone always wants to try and roll into the benefits, but unfortunately, not everyone can. So I need to make sure you can qualify first. So I'm literally being like, hey, even if you wanted these things right here, I don't even know if you can get them yet. So you almost got an assumptive sale with a takeaway approach at the same time, you know? And it's not like you're doing it manipulatively, like, oh, I don't know if you can get these. No, you're, you're telling them the truth. Like factually, uh, like I have to make sure you can even qualify for these. I know you want to think about it, but really you don't got nothing to think about right now because I don't even know if you can qualify for them. So step four, you say, so uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to make sure that you get your foot in the door, but keep it comfortable at the same time. Everyone always wants to try and roll into the benefits, but unfortunately, not everyone can. So I need to make sure you can qualify first. And then you go into the application. So I hope you never have to use this. I hope that you give such a great presentation and you proactively handle the rebuttal so that even if they think about it, they're gonna be like, you know what? I, I'm gonna tell him I can't afford it. Then they're gonna be like, I can't even say that because I already told him I could afford $5 out of every 100. What am I gonna tell him now? Maybe I'll tell him I wanna think about it. Oh, shit, I can't tell him that because, I mean, he already told me about the, you know, make a decision today. You know, they want us to think, shit, maybe I'll tell him I don't need it. Well, I, I mean, I, what am I, I going to tell him? I don't have no coverage. I only have coverage through work. What a, maybe I'll tell him I'll use my work coverage. Why? Well, actually, I can't tell him that because that was a problem. That's why you're here for the work coverage, right? That's right. So, so you want them to, like, be afraid to say it, the rebuttal, because you covered it so good in the beginning, right? But you're still going to get them. Everybody gets them. I average probably five rebuttals a sale. I probably average five rebuttals a sale.
that means they told me no, or well, I don't want to do it, or now's not a good time. And then I reduce them and they're like, oh, I'm not sure. And then I got to go over another angle and another angle. The thing is like some people get told no and like, oh, all right, nice to meet you. Have a great day. Anybody ever see Tommy Boy? Probably not. I talk about movies all the time and nobody sees any movies I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, okay, so you saw Tommy Boy? Okay. I know good. Tommy Boy. Yes, hopefully you guys For know sure. the Tommy Boy. Yeah. Okay, so in Tommy Boy, he goes in and, and makes a stealth pitch. And as soon as the guy's like, nope, he's like, all right, see you later. Boom. And then they go to like the next scene. And the guy's like, nope. And he's like, all right, have a nice day. And like, as soon as he gets told, like, no, they didn't even finish the sentence. He's like, oh, well, too bad. You know, and he, he didn't even try to even like overcome it, you know? So uh, you can't be like that. <laughs> Tommy, tell them what they're selling in the movie. Car parts. Brake pads. Brake pads, that's right. Of all things, brake pads, remember? Yes. He's gonna get, he's, he's, and then he has to sell them on the quality. And, and like, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mason said he, he, at the end, he ends up being himself and that's when he gets all the sales. Yeah, exactly. So, so the point is, 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 you know, they're going to hit you with rebuttals. You just, you gotta know it's coming. It's like going into a fight and then you get punched in the face and you're surprised. You're going to get a couple cla You're going to get a couple in on you. You know what I mean? Right, you just gotta get get ready for it. They're gonna hit you with some things, guys. Some stuff. They're gonna hit. You. Be ready for it. Handle it. Keep it moving. They'll hit you with something else. Handle it. Keep it moving. And you stay in there. Stay engaged. Stay engaged. Stay engaged. Right. Don't disengage. Don't get out of that dog fight. Stay in there for at least five five rebuttals. At least five. Right. If they hit you, if you don't want to stick after that, you know, and you don't got nowhere else to scramble to, you know, then you can disengage after five solid rebuttals that you went over. But on me, it, you know, I, I went, I went 10 for 10 the last time I went into the field, which is probably two or three years ago. And uh, I probably got told no 50 times that week, but I went 10 for 10 I sold every single person we sat with 10 for 10, but they all weren't just like, Okay, great. Sign me up. Like, oh, well, I don't know right now. Or they always has thought they're good, you know, but they're not better salesmen than me. This, she's a single mom. She's a single mom. She works at the hospital. She has no sales experience at all. I'll send one of my salespeople in there and she'll sell them on how she can't afford it. Like, how did she sell you? She has no sales experience. You're a highly trained professional in sales and you're buying what she's selling. So then I think like, are you trained in buying? Are you trained in selling? Last time I checked, we're not buying nothing. We're not buying nothing. So whatever they try and sell you, you don't buy what they're selling. You, you, you gotta almost be like, wait a minute. I'm not, but you, you might for a second, you're like, oh yeah, I can really understand how they can, might not be able to afford this. That's the wrong place to be because now you're buying what they're selling you. And you got to realize you're not supposed to buy anything today. You're the one who's supposed to be selling stuff, you know? So I would sometimes tell my, when I go out into the field and I, I have appointments with clients, I was like, I am not buying anything today. I'm not buying nothing, you know, no matter what they tell me. So, um, so anyways, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's the, the rebuttals, uh, training that I wanted to go over today <laughs> with a whole bunch of tangents and in, in tied into it. I could have covered that in like a half hour, probably maybe 45 minutes, but we threw a bunch of sauce in there, a bunch of extra stuff. Hopefully it was, it was helpful. You know, hopefully that the, 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 the message didn't get lost in the, in the mess. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is such a good um, certificate on how funeral directors wouldn't take advantage of being. Yeah. Like yeah. 
Tommy, what did Mason say? So I thought you were going to hit me with the. So Mason was like, uh, when's a good time to use the double rebuttal? The double rebuttal. The double tie down. I'm sorry. The double, double tie down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think it, um, when you're going, like he, he actually, would it be when you're going over like the freedom of choice certificate? Uh -huh. That's prime. That's like the prime one, I would say. You know, uh, when, you, when you really want to get them tied down on your benefits of what you're selling them. So the freedom of choice certificate, when you explain them this freedom of choice certificate, and then you look at them and you're like, does this make sense why they set this up for you and your family? to guarantee that your funeral will never be buried into your family ever again, Joe. And he goes, yeah. He's like, excuse me? I'm like, okay, great. I just want to make sure on the same page. Like, that's a good one to hit him with the, the double tie though. So, but I, you know, you probably don't need to use the double tie down like probably when you're going over the child safety kit, right? Cause you, you don't want to overuse it, you know, they had six kids. if, and now here's the thing, if they, it does, six kids don't matter. Uh, if, if they have, um, if you think that the number one, the number one reason why you're there is the child safety kit, then you got to make it about the child safety kit. Number two though, is they're really into it. And you know, based upon the rapport that there could be a potential to get a lot of referrals from them as well then you might want to spend a little bit more time on the child safety kit. Maybe you might want to throw that double tied on in there on some stuff. You know, that's a really good thing, but you, you, you don't want to be using that too, too much because you don't want to be going, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse, does that make sense? And you say, excuse me. Like, how can we keep saying, excuse me every time? You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be doing that all the time. Good question though. Good question. Um, any questions from anything we went over today? No, that was all good, man. That was awesome. Good stuff. Got a lot of notes down. All right. Good, 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 good guys. Good. So, um, Hey, we, we rocked it today. No breaks or nothing. You guys are absolute, uh, animals. You're zoned in, you're focused. I can see that. And uh, I'm excited for you guys. So, uh, we can break for today. Um, and, uh, You'll have uh, what? You got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to wrap up this week with all your training and everything. You'll be uh, going over some e app stuff this week. You'll be uh, going over some closing. Uh, you'll go and uh, you, you, all, all kind of stuff like that. So um, you still got your hands full with a bunch of training and everything. But great job so far, guys. Uh, if you need anything, you know, obviously just shout out. Let us know whatever we can do to help help you on your on your uh, journey here. Cool. Have Thank a good you. day, guys. Thanks. Thank you.